Welcome to the final conclusion of this whole tutorial. So when you reach this point here, congratulations, because um, yeah, it's been a long way to get here. Um, I, don't, I don't know, it's eight hours or something here. Um, so when I modeled this the first time, uh, it took me about, I would say, five to six hours. But um, yeah, doing a tutorial and in between explaining stuff um, takes a little, a little bit more time. And another thing is um, when you model stuff or, and recording it, um, yeah, you uh, sometimes you get the idea to to uh, yeah do um, parts um, that you modeled before in a different way, and that's what happened this time. So for me, it was a learning process as well. Okay, so yeah, we started off with uh, some simple uh, geometry here. Yeah, we started off with this thing here, and then we were going on. Um, creating uh, those little rubber boats and the logo and the I call those pointers and then we created um, uh, this main shape here um, which actually to me was um, the hardest part of it so and that's um, yeah I tried many different ways to create this especially uh, this arc here uh, or this what what's, co what's coming out here where the wristband is connected to and that's a, a thing where yeah, you can spend a lot of time um, figuring out what the is the best way to realize this, right? But in the end, so um, the uh, the technique I used with that curve um, coming down here and extrude those uh, edges out, that was actually the the best approach I I did. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, another thing is. If you take a look at the, those um, yeah, wristband pieces here, um, yeah, if you don't have an orthographic image from the side or something, um, yeah, you you have to eyeball that stuff. So in the end, um, if you um, make this or those things a little bit too small, or the wristband is not large in, enough in the end, or if you make it too large, and to be honest, this. Um, this time when I did it for the t tutorial, um, I made them a little bit larger than before. So, but yeah, it still looks kind of natural, but I think they could be a little bit smaller. So, yeah. And uh, another thing, the that lock down here. I mean, this is this is not a lock here. This is just some some pieces of geometry that yeah. If you have those in the background. They look okay, but uh, yeah, a functional lock. Mm, if you want to model that, you, you should have at least a real watch uh, in front of you or some nice and, and many pictures of that lock. And that would take uh, yeah another, I don't know, hour or two hours to model an exact lock or something. But yeah, in the end, um, here we are. So, uh, Another thing is that I didn't model here is um, that uh, top glass here that's sitting here on top. I did that in between, so after the last video, um, and I did it uh, when I modeled th this the first time, and I had a problem. Um, and if there's somebody out there who, who can help me out, uh, please let me know. So let me check out if I find that here, uh, that, that top glass layer. I think I got it here somewhere. No. There it is. Okay, so um, you might don't see it here because there is a. Um, if I hit Alt H, see that that's a, just a top cap of a cylinder, and then I um, yeah, extruded that outer edge here, and uh, so I um, tried to realize this with the metal ray shader, uh, the MIA material. Um, and uh, there are some cool uh, glass shader presets for that and they work fine that's a fact but if you have um, yeah and that's that's the problem I, I'm talking about so if you take um, that inner ring uh, if I can select it so I'm talking about this bump map here uh, behind that glass right so if you have um, that glass here and you have that MIA material assigned to it and um, you render that out uh, you won't see that bump map here with that Rolex logo dented in and I searched the web for that problem but uh, yeah I um, 
couldn't make it uh, I couldn't make it happen. So in the end, I was coming up with a with a simple blind shader uh, with a high transparency on it, and that's yeah, it's not perfect, and that's the reason why I just um, yeah uh, turned that off and. Uh, so if there's anybody out there who knows uh, what I'm talking about, uh, the, the glass uh, preset of the MIA material and bump maps behind it, just let me know. Alright, so <clears throat> another thing is um, what I was um, uh, yeah, having different um, approaches are those wristband connections here. Uh, so in the end I uh, took that uh, curve and then did a loft and stuff like that and that worked out fine. It looks okay, looks good. Um, but there are different ways to do this. Uh, so a friend of mine, he's working in uh, 3D Studio Max, and he, um, I told him that problem, and he um, um, just showed me that uh, in Max, and I think in Maya you can do it as well. He took just um, some kind of a beveled um, polygon. A box or cube and then um, he put some subdivisions on it and then he took an, uh, a lattice deformer and yeah that was uh, almost the same result and it was quick and easy so yeah that's uh, some uh, some nice piece of uh, watch here so uh, let me bring up some renders I did yeah so let me click on the render window here so yeah, that's um, a render I did, and I corrected here uh, that uh, issue with that uh, chrome shader and that white shader on those uh, squared boxes here. Um, the funny thing about that was uh, I c could uh, so I selected the interfaces, and always when I tr uh, set here um, assign the existing white glossy shader to that, it didn't work out. So I had to do uh, this the other way around, and I don't know why that happened. Uh, so I assigned that white shader to the part where it should be the chrome shader and vice versa and boom there you go so I don't know what that was but so, uh, so if you do it the, this way it works just uh, assign the uh, this shader as vice versa and it works so yeah some some cool render here um, another one uh, with the same uh, HDR that we used and if I take a look at that, um, if you take a look at that anisotropic shader here with that um, shader trick, with that noise ramped into the MIA uh, or MI reflection blur, I mean that looks, looks okay, but um, the pattern here um, it's a little bit too repetitive. So um, yeah, to tweak that, uh, you have to um, play around with that noise uh, texture, or you create an, uh, a noise texture in Photoshop to fix that. Right? Okay, let me show up another one. It's a close-up, and that's uh, the cool thing about our um, 4K textures. So even if you go uh, real close to to that watch, and you do some close-up re renders, they come up. Uh, even the textures come out out nicely, and that's what I wanted. So that's why I took uh, 4K textures. So with 2K textures from this position, that would be it would have the same effect. But if you're going even closer, um, yeah, you need uh, large textures. So let me frame in on that. Yeah, just some some renders. So if you um, have that model done here, uh, just play around with the the shaders and try to create some own lighting setups uh, to yeah have some different views. That's what I did here. So this is a uh, yeah a render I took. So I just put a, a Lambert uh, shader here on that floor and um, created one spotlight. Uh, that creates uh, a shadow here and illuminates a little bit um, of that um, clock face texture here. And this one here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and in the end, um, some cool renders. But, um, yeah, there was no uh, composite work that we did. Um, but that's, uh, that might be another tutorial I'm going for um, to. Um, change those shaders uh, here to crank out some different or s some important um, render passes and then go into Fusion or Photoshop and then composite that stuff back together. But in the end I hope um, yeah, you enjoyed it and hopefully you, you learned something as I did and yeah see you in my next video tutorial. Goodbye.